Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. This is an unusual mixed bag because I'm out in the countryside. I'm not on a tennis court. I have been on a tennis court earlier today, as is the norm in my life these days. I've been testing a bunch of rackets, uh, new percepts. I've talked about that. Some of you might have thought that I actually dissed the 97. I didn't really diss that particular racket. I just felt like I don't like when the companies uh, create. I mean, Yonex, so they're usually great with quality control, but even Yonex. I made the, this mistake with the swing weight where it's like 300 swing weight strung. It's just too low. You get no stability. It might work for a pure drive style racket. Maybe their East Zone 100 could be 303 and it still play fine. Not a 97 square inch 60 stiffness racket. It just simply doesn't work from, from the physical point of view. So uh, companies, including you, Yonex, please uh, improve your, your uh, swing weight quality control as well. Most people don't customize, right? They, uh, they, don't know, they don't care, not interested, and don't want to get it bogged down into that jungle where you, you know, add weight, subtract weight, add weight in other places, and it feels like a never-ending story, right? So, in this case, uh, I'm fine with it. I've done it for years, so that's no problem. But I just feel for the consumer, you know. So uh, that's why I got really annoyed that the swing weight was so so off. I added weight, and uh, really like it. But uh, more about that. On my Patreon page, I wanted to push that. Sometimes I'm bad at advertising stuff. But I think I give a lot of good value on the membership page. And free trials are available. Just wanted to talk today about Marcus Giron to start. I get so many messages, comments, stuff like that about what racket he uses now. Because he switched to the Percept. But what is it? Is it a painted V-Core 95? Or is it the actual Percepts of some kind? It is the 97D. I talked to Karu, he wanted a bigger head size, he has now 18-20 pattern, he likes that 20 mains, and um, yeah, we'll see how it goes, I mean he had a bit of a rough period for a while, but hopefully back to winning ways now, and we'll see how the Percept 97D will work for him, seems like a nice guy, and uh, best of luck to him, same can be said of Karu, been on my podcast twice, and uh, he's now playing on the tour again, got two ATP points straight away, so well done Karu, congrats. Uh, from Tennis Nerd. Really uh, wish you the best. I think it's the right thing to do, as we talked about in the podcast or afterwards, that you go for it. You know, it's uh, it's now or never, let's say. Also, big congrats to Felix. Uh, I've followed your journey. We've been in contact before throughout the years and really think it's great that you have brought a new audience to tennis through your YouTube channel and that you have finally gotten your ATP point well deserved and uh, hopefully big things to come on your journey as a YouTuber and as a professional tennis player. So really wanted to get that out of the way because these guys do a great job. Many, many tennis YouTubers are very nice people and also great tennis players. Taking a little bit of a panting break here because I'm at some elevation. I will show you where I am. Well, I won't show you exactly where I am unless you are the geo guesser, but uh, it's a pretty place. You know, I'm, uh, I'm enjoying it. A little bit of a hike, as you can see. I also wanted to ask you what you think about the Laver Cup, because I, it seems to be suffering a bit of an identity crisis. I was there 2019, you know, saw Fed, Zorafa, uh, amazing events, like great production. That, but does it matter beyond these guys? Like, that's the question now. And, and is it an exhibition or is it an actual important event for the players and that, that's really important because I feel like you know team world they seem to think it's a it's a really important event maybe because they were always underdogs and now they're finally winning while the team Europe who used to be very very star-studded team seems to think it's more of a exhibition and you know we had this argument whatever you want to call it with um, Felix Auger Aliasim uh, on one hand on the team world and Guy Monfils from team Europe and Monfils you know, he took some extra time between things. I mean, he's a showman, so that's what's kind of usual stuff. And this is a perfect vehicle for him to show more of his talent and his skills. But uh, yeah, it, it, in, it annoyed Felix a little bit. And uh, he complained about it to the ref. Monfis came up to him and started explaining, well, I mean, this is my first time playing here. I thought this was a fun thing. You know, why are you so serious? And that was quite interesting, you know. Um, I don't know where you are on this. Uh, I like the event. I like the idea of the event, but I feel like they need to clarify between themselves, between the players, everyone that, what is this? Is this going to be like a proper tournament where they need to put in there everything? Maybe they should have some ranking points. I don't know. 
Uh, or is this just a fun exhibition thing? Because it's tough to play in, in both camps, right? And if it's just exhibition, it may be a bit too much. So, and if it's an exhibition, the scoring system is fine. But if it's an, you know, with the first day one point, second day two points, third day three points, which is great for entertainment, but maybe in a official competition, it's a bit dodgy, right? So, um, yeah, they have something to figure out there. I don't know. I don't know the answer. Um, I know that this year I'm not as excited about it as I've been previous years with Rafa and Roger, of course. Uh, I mean, last year we had Rafa, Roger, Andy, and Novak. They, they still lost, but they had those players, which was pretty amazing and a feast for tennis fans. This year it seems a little bit more lukewarm. Still might be better for the competition that it is a bit like that. I don't know, but uh, keen to hear your opinions in the comments. I also want to mention that Stiga is in the racket industry now. You might know Stiga from table tennis rackets, such as the cool cyber shape that Truls Murgaard from Sweden is playing. Uh, they also do, I guess, lawnmowers and shit like that. But uh, now they're also making tennis rackets. I don't know how much in terms of making or they just buy the mold from somewhere, which maybe is more likely in this case. I don't know. Uh, but I'm keen to test the racket. Henrik said it uh, played a bit like a pure drive original, which is not a bad thing. So uh, I hope to get my hands on a demo for the Stiga racket. So they are now in the market. Uh, what I wanted to add about Stiga is that Simon Freund, who has his own YouTube channel, he's a pro player, uh, aspiring pro and uh, he's actually playing with Stiga so um, that's quite interesting maybe he would be a guy to get on the podcast I, I enjoyed the podcast people seem to like them uh, so I know some of you might think I should just stick to gear but sorry I will I will do other stuff as well sometimes I get bored with gear uh, and uh, my my tennis really suffers from from gear stuff uh, because I feel like I'm playing with four different rackets in a tournament and to test and you know the tennis level drops if you're always playing around with with your setup. Many of you should know this by now. It's just very tough to play consistent tennis when you're always switching feel and strings and gear and, and stuff like that, right? So um, I should be more consistent. And I should follow my own advice, but sometimes I'm bad at that, especially when it comes to rackets. There's too many and you know, you keep testing and then you get lost in the testing. You have like seven rackets I had in a recent period to test. And that's a bit much for one guy. Uh, and I need to find a solution to that. So if you uh, want to help out, write reviews, write uh, articles, which is very beneficial. You know, I can offer some small payment. I'm not a big media conglomerate, sadly, but uh, maybe in the future, who knows? But uh, it would be, I would really need help because I've been doing everything myself and I, I need some assistance not to be working all the time because that's a little bit how it is. I'm also playing tennis, which is a work, but it's also fun, but it's work. So it's, it's all a gray zone right now, right? So so if you are into this stuff and you are good with content creation, uh, different forms of it, marketing or whatever, please reach out. I appreciate you guys and girls. Have a nice day now and don't forget to play some tennis.